The mushrooming of individuals claiming to be wealthy forex traders living lavish lifestyles has become common on social media. But many who bought into their supposed riches believe they were scammed. They used us. They used me. I just regretted the part where I trusted somebody uh, with my money. He even said it in court that he was not employed. So this is how he was making a living. If you're using foreign exchange just to try and make money, you're essentially gambling. Some of us got to just to make sure that our cash is kept safe. Me. Nothing else, just to make sure that our cash is safe. What this week's you? special assignment questions the hype around this new wave of supposed forex traders and what people really need to know about this market. Yolanda Tlakega had been saving for a deposit to go towards purchasing a house. But she felt the money she had as an investment with a certain company was taking long to yield returns. Forex trading, which she had a bit of experience in, seemed like a better option. I was actually running a live account of my own, um, but not an expert at all. I was just learning the charts, trading bits by bits, a very small fraction, just to, but I didn't have time really. She cashed in her investment. I had about 50k. I spent 20k on, on needs I had at the time. And I took 30k. I wanted to invest it in Forex because it's what I wanted to do at the time. I wanted to just do Forex and see where it's going to take me. She believed because she couldn't commit fully to trading herself, it would be wise to find someone to trade for her. She had identified a popular individual, Jabulani Cashflow Ngobo, who sold himself as a forex trader, and she thought he was credible. As in, they post their trading um, reviews, as in, this is what they did and this is what they, this was the income. So they would show us their wins and their trades. So we would see the wins. Yes, you know, there are losses here, here and there, but people really hardly show their losses. But he would post about his wins, as in, oh, this is the currency, this is the pay I took, and this is how much I made of it. She says she jumped at the opportunity when Ngobo advertised an offer to personally trade for people on a first-come, first-served basis. The understanding was that he would manage their accounts. She sent an email to a designated email address, and days later he phoned back. She was advised to register on a website and then open an account to load money, and after that he would trade on her behalf. She would be required to hand over her username and password and she would be able to see what was happening on her account. But she claims her account was not being attended to at all. I was a bit frustrated um, with the account being dormant because I had plans about how much the reason, I, the, the decision I made was not just a decision to have the money sit there on the trading platform. But I wanted to see them perform um, transactions of trading in with other currencies, different currencies as in that is. So when, when I saw that, I got frustrated. I tried to call him and then a week later, the account started moving. Whenever I would call him and I see the account is moving and is moving, strangely, like I would do better than this. You know, I would trade on myself, but I wouldn't do these stupid decisions that are being done here. Call Jablani, he is lost. He doesn't know what's happening. As in, it's clearly that it's clear that he's not the one who's trading the account, like he said. Because the movements, the trading movements that were happening there were very, very absurd. She says she realized this wasn't what she was promised. I would take screenshots, I would send it to him, I would be mad, crazy what's happening in this account, because this is not what you had promised. And then when I saw that I'm losing about 15% of the account every week or, so, or, or every three weeks, 15% of the money is gone. I actually really got very, very, very mad thinking, no, how are you going to replace all of that money that you have already, um, you have already lost now? At, 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 at the beginning, you said there was going to be such increments, but now it's only a decrease of all the investments that I had put in. So when I saw that every time the, uh, the volumes that they choose to trade with are so big, unrealistic, that you know when you lose, you lose such a big chunk of your investment. So that's when I got crazy. I, I would phone him. 
I can see he's very calm and he doesn't even understand what I'm, why I'm so hyped up. So I would actually call him, yell and shout and say, no, 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 stop trading yummy and uh, I'm safuni all of this anymore and because I don't understand and I want my all my trading all the all the money that I've put in back that's when the money had really gone declining every night now Yolanda blames herself I thought about coming to the public about it firstly because I didn't know what exactly the police uh, opening up a case is going to do how is how are the going to charge him what is going to be the case at the end it was my choice to go and take my money to him without a certificate of um, financial he is not a financial institution he's, it was my choice it was my own risk freely so to do that so I didn't see it as something that the public the, the justice the law the justice is going to help me in Jabulani Ngobo, who claimed to be a forex trader, has many aggrieved people accusing him of taking them for a ride. They say they trusted him with their money. Yes, boy! <laughs> they must either pay back that money or be jailed for, for fraud. She alleges Ngobo was never honest to begin with. In retrospect, I felt like cash flow was very deceitful because... When he comes to you, he spoke to me on the phone. Almost every week we were talking on the phone, especially now, later on when I was shouting. And he came in very nicely at first when he was introducing the investment to me. But later on, he became something totally different. He became, I don't know, Umuntu, uh, a snake or what you call a pervert, I'm sorry, because a pervert, because he didn't do what he had said he would do. And after he had wronged me, he just disappeared. She still wants what she believes is left of her money in her now defunct trading account. By the way, my money, st my $642 is still on that Smart FX Pro account, which is about 10,000 Rand. So they lost on my account about 20K. But there is still a 10,000 rand that is still sitting on, on that account. Zandile, not her real name, admits she was also attracted to forex trading after doing a three-day course. It looked profitable. She has asked us to hide her identity for safety reasons. Uh, according to the idea that uh, banks are ripping us, you know, we invest our money in the bank and the bank themselves trade your money and you are getting about, I mean, how many percent um, uh, monthly or annually. So it was like I wanted my money to grow faster. I hope she says Ngobo's lavish lifestyle convinced her he was legitimate. The guy is friends with everybody. You know, every celebrity, I mean, the life... Um, he got invited to, to places. I mean, you think, okay, you know, if he's invited to interviews, he's there, he's able to appear on TV, write books. I mean, at the time when I um, was, uh, was interested in, in him was the time he was actually about to publish a book. And I thought, okay, you know, if he's able to write a book about how he does things, I mean, certainly <laughs> there's something there. She explains that there was no formal agreement it was verbal and just a post on Instagram. Really nothing signed concrete on black and white, but it was just a, an Instagram agreement, I, I would say. So it was just, also he would just paste, uh, post uh, videos of, 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 of him saying, I mean, look at my account, I never have a loss. So you guys don't even have to worry about anything. Those were the only agreements you get, but nothing really on, on paper. Uh, to say you'll get you, your profits. She alleges she was led to believe everything was above board because there was a supposed broker. When there's a broker that you think it's registered, accredited, and you are actually not depositing money into his account, but he says to you, no, register with a broker and then you'll give me access to, the, to your account from the broker's side. You think, okay, the money's not going to him. It's going to the broker. So when we start to have problems, I don't have to deal with him. I'll do with the broker. 
but it's only la later you actually tie the two together to say, okay, the broker is in with them. According to her, things went well initially. For the first couple of weeks, he does keep uh, contact. Uh, I remember I sent him a WhatsApp but one morning. I can't remember, I was just checking and all, all things were looking good and I sent him a WhatsApp and he responded and said, thank you, you know, all was well. So only when, when things start going south, south and you start um, contacting him, you'll just read your WhatsApp and you'll respond. However, she claims at times she couldn't make sense of the transactions. The fluctuations were a bit too much. Even the loss was like, I mean, we know you have stop losses. You have take profit and stop losses. There's a certain amount that you just can't lose at one go. But I thought, okay, let me just trust. And when I, when I contacted them and they said there was a system clear, I thought, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I knew that couldn't be a trade. You see, but yeah, mm. that was then him sure. taking your money and running with it. One morning in May, she says half the money she had invested was gone. It looked like a loss. In the trading world, it's just a minus a loss. It looked like a bad trade. I panicked and I sent... Uh, him and WhatsApp and I said, okay, you know what? I just noticed this on the account. What's going on? And he called me back and he said, do you want out? And I said, but to go, to want out is not going to help me at this moment. I mean, you should be saying something else besides do I want out? And he said, uh, and I said, no, I don't want out, but what's going on? And he said, okay, uh, everything will be fine. Nothing was fine a couple of days later. I try now to contact him, no answer. When she wanted to withdraw, she experienced problems. And now the issue was, okay, let me try to withdraw what's left of it. You realize the broker is a fraud. Nobody's there. When you, the, the system is there. The online system is there. You capture in my account details, submit that can I have my money withdrawn. Your money will not come to you. The system is there, but nobody's there to process your withdrawal. The South African Reserve Bank received complaints from members of the public about cash flow properties, the company owned by Ngobo and his business associate Nzabala Zodlamini. There were suspicions that they were running a multi-million rand pyramid scheme. In 2011, the Reserve Bank then appointed Integrated Forensic Accounting Services as temporary inspectors to investigate the possible contravention of the Banks Act by cash flow properties. They had made themselves high-profile individuals where there was a much celebrated birthday party of Mr. Noble. I believe it was the 26th birthday at the time and there was a massive party where the media um, reported on having a million rand expenditure on that birthday party and that made them high-profile. His report confirmed that cash flow properties had contravened the Banks Act. The information also confirmed that the company was in fact insolvent. We found that um, both parties had been involved in a practice which we deemed to be in contravention of the legislation where they had invited members of the public to deposit money, they called it loans, and they were offered extraordinary <coughs> returns of 20% per month as a guaranteed return, and that's a contravention. He says they identified about 130 transactions, which made up about 12 million rand, but they could not recover those monies, so the investors never got their funds back. He warns against being lured into get-rich-quick business opportunities. That money is the next investor's capital which was distributed. That's the nature of a Ponzi scheme. So social media, unfortunately, has become a very dangerous form of marketing a scheme of this nature. And beware. In the same year, the Financial Services Conduct Authority received 640 complaints from the public, alleging that cash flow properties was taking money from them and investing it in forex trading. What they were actually doing was to advertise their business and um, train members of the public um, to trade in forex. And however, during that training process, they would also um, advise people whether they can indeed uh, trade um, in Forex. And in certain instances, they would refer clients to a trading platform or an entity that would um, provide a trading platform. 
Banda says Ngobo and Lamini were misrepresenting themselves as authorized financial services providers that could trade Forex on behalf of their clients, and they were contravening Section 7.1 of the Financial Advisory and Intermediary Services Act. If you trade for your own account, if I, as Nomsai, am trading Forex for myself, there is nothing wrong with it. It is not illegal. But it's the moment I give advice to you as a member of the public uh, to say it, it's a good investment. Um, you are going to make huge returns uh, from that. I am advising you to invest in a financial product and therefore you've got to be registered with us. Banda explains that they duped the public of millions. They've just been living a lavish lifestyle at the expense of the people who have been working very hard uh, to earn that particular money for it to be taken like that and for somebody just to uh, live a lavish lifestyle. You know, buy expensive cars, uh, expensive clothes, uh, living in expensive suburbs. Um, and one of them was actually, he even said it in court that he was not employed. So this is how he was making a living. Last month, at the Specialized Commercial Crimes Court in Durban, they were sentenced to six years imprisonment, two of which were suspended. They also received a fine of 200,000, wholly suspended for five years. They are currently on bail and appealing their sentence. I'll make it, I'll make it, I'll make it. I interviewed Durban Hawks spokesperson, Captain Simpiu Mshongo, who encouraged the grief victims to still come forward. Mflongo confirms that 27 cases against Ngobo and Lamini were opened at the Durban Central Police Station. However, some victims just gave up. But just what is the hype around forex trading? We approached various institutions to educate us about this market. Neelan Mora is head of trading at gt247.com, a company in the retail space that has an online trading platform. They don't offer their clients trading advice. He says foreign exchange is an essential tool. Traditionally, um, trades would happen in the forex market typically to conduct trade between people or companies in two different countries. So imagine uh, us being an exporting nation like we are, and we've got customers in the US. When we, effectively, if they want to buy our products, they'd buy rands in the forex market to pay the local supplier and convert their dollars to rands by doing that. And so traditionally that would happen. Naturally, going forward, um, in the advent and introduction of the retail space, lots of people have started trading currencies speculatively. So um, one can make money from it, obviously, uh, but you've got to be on the right side of it. And so the forex market is the deepest pools of liquidity in the world. Uh, it's estimated between five and eight trillion dollars worth of value changes hands in the forex market every single day. He says the industry has been tainted by fake forex traders. If I had a recipe to constantly make money on every single trade, why would I want to sell that? I would just use that, right, and trade. And so you've got to ask yourself these questions. And so we don't get involved in any of that. We, we want to be the product provider and the system provider to enable you to do it. So it forces you to think, which you should do. It forces you to educate yourself, which you should do. And as a, as a common rule, please, if anyone is looking to get involved in currency trading or FX trading or foreign exchange trading, please educate yourself. Understand the risks that are associated with it because very often you will only ever get to hear the good stories. You'll never hear the bad stories. The Johannesburg Stock Exchange says foreign exchange spot trading is not the type of trading they facilitate.
if an individual wants to seriously go into forex trading and they've decided they just want to take that chance, make sure you enter it with money you are willing to lose because you're not guaranteed a return. It is not an investment that has a guarantee. You know, and the short-term trading that comes with it as well. You might have a small win today, but tomorrow you might have a big loss. Nothing is consistent and nothing is guaranteed when it comes to forex trading. Private trader Tom Stiengamp, who runs a virtual forex college, warns that it can become an addiction. When you start trading, it's very difficult to stop trading because you want to do it more and more. And even if you lose, if you lose at trading, it's also addiction. You keep on doing it, but you don't want to quit. And you don't want to admit you're wrong. You don't want to admit, listen, um, I had enough losses. I need to get out of this. Because when the market grabs you, it will hold on to you tight. But some, who say they have learned a tough lesson, feel people like Ngobo shouldn't have been given the platform to promote their work. Ngobo has a book out. After the whole thing, when you realize this guy is having so many people, but he was able to appear on so many media platforms, you question a whole lot of things. Even our own uh, media broadcast, even the, 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 the book uh, publishers. I mean, what is the book about if you're skinny people? She says their sentence brings very little solace. Had it been me who invested 10 grand and traded and lost, it would have been, it's okay. You know, I, I, I just regretted the part where I trusted somebody uh, with my money. And it, it's, it's, it's that. Don't buy into the fleshy life. The things that he has, the cars that they have, it's money from people who are investing with them, not from the trading. They used us. They used me. Special assignments requested an interview with Jabulani Ngob, which he declined. He said he has been advised by his legal team not to comment. And Lamini didn't respond to our numerous attempts requesting an interview.